I invite you to turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Ruth. Explain why I'm in Ruth for a moment. In a moment, I uh, will begin just by asking: uh, When we get in the jam, where do we go for help? We can feel pretty secure, safe, independent when things are going well, but when, when our plans fail, when we have health issues, when, when relationships break, when we lose a loved one, uh, when financial troubles hit us, where, wh- where do we turn? What, what do we do about that? Uh, life is often hard and challenging, uh, and we can feel vulnerable to uh, the the events, the circumstances around us. We look to God. As Christians, we look to God. We look to God from whom our help comes. And that's good and right. But how does God intervene? How does God help us? Uh, He can change our circumstances around us. He can do that even in miraculous ways. He can change our hearts. But sometimes God just works through people as well. You can use people in our lives. And we see this in the book of Ruth. I I think uh, the the book of Ruth uh, can show us one of the ways that God demonstrates His loving kindness to us. I've been reading through the Bible in my uh, daily devotional times. I've just gone through the book of Judges. Some of you have read through the Judges, and and you've seen just a, a pretty dismal cycle of, of uh, the people will get themselves in a fix because they reject God, and they do their own thing, and, and things go crazy, terrible, and they cry out to God, and God helps them, and for a little while things are okay, but very soon it says over and over again, the, they, the people just did what was right in their own eyes, forgot about God, lived their own ways. Um, and so I read through Judges, and then come to the book of, of Ruth, and it was just such a blessing to me to read through these four chapters, and as I did so, I said, I'm going to preach on that on Mother's Day. I wanted to set this part and set it apart for you. Now, it's, it's a, a short book, just four chapters, but I can't read all four chapters to you this morning. Um, but you will do yourself a favor if you sometime today read the book of Ruth. It'll only take you about 15 minutes to, to read it, and uh, you'll be able to fill in some of the gaps that I will leave. I'm only going to hit some highlights in the book of Ruth for you today. Um, read a portion now, but uh, you can fill in the rest later, and I will fill in some of the uh, the, the summaries of the gaps as I as I share from Ruth with you this morning. But let's pray, and we will we will turn to Ruth together. Our gracious heavenly Father, we thank you for your loving kindness. You know our needs, you know our burdens, you know even now as we, as we come before you that there, are, um, that there are things that we are feeling and thinking that are hard. We're going through some trials, we are experiencing some brokenness in relationships, we are grieving. Um, Lord, we turn to you. You are the one from whom our help comes. You are steadfast in your love for us. Uh, and Lord, as we, as we turn to the book of Ruth, help us to see some of the ways that you show us your help, some of the tangible ways that you love us and enable us to get through uh, difficult times that we might face. And so, Lord, um, Help us to set aside other distractions, to turn fully and faithfully to you, to listen to your word as you speak to us, and enable us, Lord, by your spirit to not only hear it, but also take it to heart and to apply it. For we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, Just before I read, I, I was reminded I... I had a chance uh, just to take a quick trip down to uh, West Lafayette, see my own mom for early Mother's Day and and see my dad and um, my aunt, who I I think is 
zooming in with us today. My aunt is quite a card person. She has a ministry of cards. Um, I think she keeps Hallmark in business. She, she is just sending cards all the time. And, and mom had, had shared a card and a, uh, and a tote, uh, matching tote bag that she had sent to my mom. And it was so cool. Um, and the tote bag had four women uh, painted. Uh, this watercolor artist had, had depicted these four women from the Bible, uh, Tamar and Rahab and Ruth and Bathsheba, and, and talking about how these are all important mothers in Jesus' family tree, and how God blessed um, all of us through these four mothers. And uh, if I had thought about it earlier, I probably have a way to call that up and, and uh, project it. Maybe I'll do it next week, but, uh, but I didn't do that. But uh, kind of a cool card, cool encouragement. And Ruth... Uh, among the four women, Ruth is depicted as holding a sheaf of grain, a, a bundle of grain, which is a, a good marker and a good reminder. But I, I appreciated this artist and her rendering and uh, thinking broadly of, of, of the mothers that uh, God has used in uh, the Old Testament times. And we'll, we'll see that a little bit here now in the book of Ruth. And I'm going to start um, a, a bit in the middle of the story. I'm going to start reading at Ruth chapter 1 and verse 15. Hear the word of God. The, the Ruth, uh, Naomi has come on, come on hard times, and her, her, she says to her daughters-in-law, you're just going to have to go back to your own families. So that's what's happening here. Naomi said... See, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Do not urge me to leave you or to return from following you. For where you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God my God. Where you die, I will die. And there will I be buried." May the Lord do so to me, and more also, if anything but death parts me from you. And when Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said, no more. So Ruth stayed with her mother-in-law, her mother Naomi, and they returned to Israel, and uh, they are trying to uh, find a way to survive now back in their homeland. And uh, Ruth begins to glean in one of Naomi's relatives' fields, and that's where we take it up next in 2.17. So Ruth gleaned in the field until evening. Then she beat out what she had gleaned, and it was about an ephah of barley. And she took it up and went into the city. Her mother-in-law, Naomi, saw that she, what she had gleaned. She also brought out and gave her what food she had left over from being satisfied. And her mother-in-law said to her, Where did you glean today, and where have you worked? Blessed be the man who took notice of you. So she told her mother-in-law with whom she had worked and said, The man's name with whom I worked today is Boaz. And Naomi said to her daughter-in-law, May he be blessed by the Lord, whose kindness has not forsaken the living or the dead. Naomi also said to her, The man is a close relative of ours, one of our redeemers. And Ruth the Moabite said, Besides, he said to me, You shall keep close by, you shall keep close by my young men until they have finished all my harvest. And Naomi said to Ruth, her daughter-in-law, It is good, my daughter, that you go out with his, his young women, lest in another field you be assaulted. So she kept close to the young women of Boaz, gleaning until the end of the barley and wheat harvests, and she lived with her mother-in-law. Then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said to her, My daughter, should I not seek rest for you, that it may be well with you? Is not Boaz our relative, with whose with whose young women you were? See, he is winnowing barley tonight at the 
threshing floor. Wash, therefore, and anoint yourself, and put on your cloak, and go down to the threshing floor, but do not make yourself known to the man until he has finished eating and drinking. But when he lies down, observe the place where he lies. Then go and uncover his feet and lie down, and he will tell you what you he will tell you what to do. And she replied, All that you say I will do. So she went down to the threshing floor and did just as her mother-in-law had commanded her. And when Boaz had eaten and drunk and his heart was merry, he went to lie down at the end of the heap of grain. Then she came softly and uncovered his feet and lay down. At midnight the man was startled and turned over, and behold, a woman lay at his feet. He said, Who are you? And she answered, I am Ruth, your servant. Spread your wings over your servant, for you are a redeemer. And he said, May you be blessed by the Lord, my daughter. You have made this last kindness greater than the first, in that you have not gone after young men, whether rich, poor, or rich. And now, my daughter, do not fear. I will do for you all that you ask. For all my fellow townsmen know that you are a worthy woman. And now it is true that I am a redeemer. Yet there is a redeemer nearer than I. Remain tonight, and in the morning, if he will redeem you, good, let him do it. But, but if he is not willing to redeem you, then as the Lord lives, I will redeem you. Lie down until the morning. So she lay at his feet until the morning, but arose before one could recognize another. And he said, Let it not be known that the, women came to the, that the woman came to the threshing floor. And he said, Bring the garment you are wearing and hold it out. So she held it, and he measured out six measures of barley and put it on her. Then she went into the city. And when she came to her mother-in-law, she said, How did you fare, my daughter? Then she told her all that the man had done for her, saying, These six measures of barley he gave to me, for he said to me, You must not go back empty-handed to your mother-in-law. She replied, Wait, my daughter, until you learn how the matter turns out, for the man will not rest, but will settle the matter today. Okay, then I am going to skip to one more section in chapter 4, and we'll put it all together. Chapter 4, verses 13 through 17. Hear the word of God. So Boaz took Ruth, and she became his wife. And he went into her, and the Lord gave her conception, and she bore a son. Then the woman said to Naomi, Blessed be the Lord who has not left you this day without a Redeemer, and may his name be renowned in Israel. He shall be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher of your old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you, who is more to you than seven sons, has given birth to him. Then Naomi took the child and laid him on her lap and became his nurse. And the women of the neighborhood gave him a name, saying, A son has been born to Naomi. They named him Obed. He was the father of Jesse, the father of David. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, the main idea I want you to see in all of this story of Ruth is that God shows us his loving kindness through mothers and family and other people often and always through Jesus, our Redeemer. That's the main thing that I want to lift out out of this story of Ruth. Uh, Naomi and her family finds themselves to be in desperate need. But the God of providence helps them. And he helps them through a mother, a mother-in-law, through family relationships, and through a redeemer, through an outside protector. So we see a mother and a redeemer here. We start with the mother, the mother-in-law, Naomi. And I will refer to her as a mother because Ruth very much uh, regarded Naomi as her own mother. Uh, they had a very close relationship. Uh, 
Um, we will see how God often shows us His loving kindness through mothers and family members and other people. And we see it in Naomi. We see it in how, the ways Naomi loves and leads and lives out her faith before her daughter-in-law, Ruth. Naomi loved her family and her children, but life had not been easy for her. Uh, you'll see more of this when you go and read the whole uh, book for yourselves. But, but Naomi and her husband, they left Israel because of a famine. And they needed to go someplace where they could get bread and they could survive. And so Elimelech and Naomi, they went down to Moab, a, a country that wasn't too far away on the other side of the Dead Sea. Um, the Moabites and the Israelites didn't get along great, but in a time of famine, you do what you need to do to keep the family together. So they go down and they, uh, they settle there. They sojourn there. While they are there, Elimelech, Naomi's husband, dies. And, and their two sons uh, marry Moabite women. And the two sons die. So that leaves just Naomi and her two daughters-in-law. And what are they going to do now? Well, Naomi had heard that the famine may be over in Israel, and she resolves to return. But she encourages the daughters-in-law to go back. She's going to lead them and tell them, this is what you need to do. This is her advice. This is her, her counsel. It will be best for you if you go back to your own mothers and families. Now, Naomi loves them. They're very close to her. And she is going to miss them greatly, but she is going to do what seems best to them, for them. And she does what she thinks is right, even though it's painful. And Ruth returns to the promised land. She goes back to the promised land uh, with Naomi. Uh, Naomi encourages, uh, encourages Ruth to glean in the field. She's going to have to go out. It's the time of the harvest, and she can glean in the field. She coaches Ruth on how to present herself, uh, some discipling here, some life skills training, how to go out into these fields and do this gleaning. Uh, just as an aside, I think it's a wonderful story of, of uh, the way the people of God had patterned themselves and arrange their society. Even the law was written to allow for this thing called gleaning. And it was a, 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 a demonstration of, of wisdom and compassion that was written into the law of Moses. And you may be familiar with it, but the idea was if you had fields, when it came time to, to harvest the fields, you would, you would reap the harvest, but you wouldn't go to the very edges. You wouldn't try to bring in every last sheaf of grain. You would leave the edges. That would allow the poor then to come in after you had harvested the field, and the poor could, could harvest along the sides of the field and, and do the work for themselves to glean and to thresh for themselves, and, but, but to uh, have this work and to have this source of income. Uh, they would do that with grain and with fruit, allowed the poor to collect. Uh, now, it might have been easier in, a, in an agrarian society to build those kind of, of structures in, uh, but I, I wish we could find ways to do that. Uh, that's very, uh, uh, very uh, compassionate way of ordering the society. So that's what Ruth does. She goes out and, and, and she finds the field of Boaz, and they have done most of the, 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 the harvesting, and uh, Ruth is part of several others who are following along after the harvesters and gleaning what they are leaving behind. Throughout this, all, uh, throughout this whole period, Naomi has been living out her faith in, living out her faith before Ruth. 
Naomi has gone through these hard times, but she still believes in God and believes that God is a God of providence, that God orders things. So she'll say, for example, uh, when she hears that the famine is lifted, she says, it looks like God's hand has returned upon Israel. And so it is God who has brought crops again to Israel, and maybe I can go back. But she is also aware that she has gone through some bitter times. Her husband has died. Her sons have died. Instead of rejecting God, she says, God is a God of providence. It is a bitter providence in her life right now. But she still acknowledges that God is the one who is leading in all things. She had a kind of mature faith in this. She sees God at work at all times, good and bad. She doesn't sugarcoat things. Her faith is not phony or superficial. And, and I, I think that Ruth benefits then by seeing Naomi's faith and how she deals with the hard as well as with the good. And I think that's the kind of faith that we want to have and that we want to, to cling to ourselves and we want to to live out in front of others. not uh, n We don't need to express every doubt to everyone, but, but we certainly don't want to, to portray a phony picture that things are always good when they're not. We're not secular. We, we're not saying God is irrelevant. We're not secular. And on the other side, we are not, um, we are not naive about how life can be difficult and challenging. We just want our faith to be real and grounded in the providence of God. Well, that's the faith. That's the faith that Naomi is living out before Ruth. And Ruth is watching, and she is learning to trust in God even when she doesn't understand. God is showing his loving kindness then to Ruth through Naomi, through this mother as she lives out her faith. But God also shows His loving kindness in another way, not just through Naomi, but God shows loving kindness through a Redeemer, Boaz. And so Boaz now comes onto center stage, and, and Boaz is a remarkable character. Uh, we would call him a stand-up guy, uh, compassionate to the poor and the gleaners. He cares about his uh, workers and his employees in the field. Um, Ruth is very, very vulnerable, and Boaz protects her and says, you come back here. If you go into other fields, I don't know what might happen, but you come back here to my field, glean in my field, and I'll make sure that you are protected. And even is passing along extra food to uh, Naomi and to Ruth. Instead of taking advantage of her situation, um, Boaz is humbled and flattered. He says, for example, in, in Ruth chapter 3 and verse 10, he says, um, may you be, he says to Ruth, may you be blessed by the Lord, my daughter. You have made this last kindness greater than the first in that you have not gone after young men whether poor or rich. You've asked me to come in and to be your protector and to be your redeemer. Instead of taking advantage, he takes on Ruth, and he is a patron for her, a, a, a guardian. Uh, in, this, in this, Boaz is being more than just a stand-up guy, more than a nice guy. He is being a kinsman redeemer. And some of you who have done some reading in the Old Testament or other commentaries know about this idea of kinsman redeemer. It's a very particular kind of relationship that we see among the Jews. A, a kinsman redeemer is someone that is appointed in the Old Testament law to stand in to be a redeemer and a rescuer for family members who are in distress. Remember, in the Old Testament, God gave the people a promise, a covenant. I will be your God, you will be my people, and he promises to make of them a people and give them a place, a people and a place. And so God 
gave these heirs of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and then the twelve sons, twelve tribes of Israel, they all had their land that God had given to them, part of the promise. And the Old Testament law was a way of protecting the land and the people, protecting the promise. Because what would happen? If, if your family became very poor and destitute, what could you do? Well, you could sell off your land. Or you could sell yourself as a kind of indentured servant. You could uh, sell yourself into slavery for a period of time. That's what you did, if that's what you had to do to keep body and soul together. But the Old Testament law said, we don't want this land to pass out of the people of God when it has to be sold to keep to to, to, to earn enough to make a living. Or if people end up selling themselves into servitude, there needs to be a way of redeeming them. So the Old Testament law said the, the closest relatives need to take upon themselves buying back this land or buying back the freedom of relatives. That is a way of, of keeping God's promises. And this person then who would buy back the land or buy back the person would be known as the kinsman redeemer, the relative who comes in to rescue. And Boaz is that kinsman redeemer. He's a relative, so he has a right and a responsibility under the law to come in and help. He is not the closest relative. So Boaz says... Ruth, you have asked me to come in and to be your redeemer. And I am legally able to do that, but there is someone who is closer. And so I have to go to that person first. Because if that person wants to be your redeemer, then, then he is the closest one, isn't entitled to do that. So uh, Boaz does everything just by the book and what is right, and he goes to that, that closer kinsman and said... You have heard Naomi has come back, and she has a little bit of prof, uh, property from her, her husband who is dead, but you are a relative, and you are next in line to buy back that property if that's what you want to do. But Boaz does another thing that's kind of cool. And he's thinking about Ruth, and he says, but you've got to do this. If you take the property, you take Ruth as your wife. And this relative who said, well, the property sounds pretty good, but I'm not sure that I want another wife. So he says, I'm going to pass. And Boaz says, I will, I will take the property, and I will take Ruth to be my wife. She comes in. He comes in as the kinsman redeemer. Now, in all of this, we are given this story uh, for many reasons. We're given a, a picture of God, we're, but we are also given quite a picture of Jesus in this passage because Boaz stands in as a kind of an example or a, a forerunner, a type of Christ. So there's so many valuable things in the book of Ruth, a, a picture of the the. the compassionate side of the law at work, of the importance of family and how family needs to take care of one another, but we are also seeing a picture of the role that Jesus will play as our kinsman redeemer, as the one who redeems you and me from the guilt of our sin, from our bondage because of sin. Jesus is our kinsman and redeemer. He pays our debts. He rescues us. He sets us free from sin and from the oppression of the devil. He secures for us our future, our, our safe livelihood, our eternal inheritance. He unites us to himself. He marries us, and we are his bride. So God is loving us through people like through Naomi, as Naomi passed on the love of God and her love for Ruth. 
And God is loving us through Redeemer, just as Boaz was Redeemer to Ruth. He sends Jesus as our Redeemer. Well, what, what do we do then in response to these things? Two things I will lift up to you, and one is, one is a very practical note. As those who have been rescued, God may put us, us into a position to be rescuers ourselves. If we have been redeemed and united to Christ, then, then we, are, we are seeing others and valuing others more and more the way God does with a compassion for the poor, as we see like in the gleaning, and care for those who work in our fields, and not just for the sake of human flourishing alone, but also for the greater good of human redemption, for salvation. Boaz is, is eager to be redeemer, uh, but he also points in his example to the redeemer who is going to come. To Jesus. He says, it is true that I am a redeemer, yet there is a redeemer nearer than I. Well, he's thinking of this closer relative, but we think of Jesus, the near redeemer. And can we say that we are redeemers also? Do we have family members who are in need? Uh, what about the church, the household of faith? Will God open our hearts as God opened the heart of Boaz? Ruth trusted Naomi, and then she trusted in the Redeemer Boaz. She was devoted to her mother. I will go wherever you go. Your people will be my people. Ruth gave up everything because of her love for Naomi. And when we ask people to follow Jesus, we're asking people to give up everything and to follow Jesus. We're asking them to submit to another Lord. We're asking them to follow in a way that to the unbelieving world seems like craziness. We're asking a lot. Are we the kind of trustworthy people that can talk about Jesus in ways that people will listen? Boaz was. Can people trust us? And will we love them, and will we love them enough to lead them to the greater Redeemer? He is able to bring blessing out of bitterness and to be the restorer of lives. The women uh, surrounded Naomi and said, Blessed be the Lord who has left you, not left you this day without a Redeemer, and may his name be renowned in Israel. So we could be rescuers. But the other thing that we can do is just cling to our Redeemer time and time again. We are needy. We are desperate. We have all kinds of troubles. And we know the troubles that we face. We face financial troubles. We face troubles with addictions. We face troubles with relationships that are strained and torn. We face health issues and uh, grief when we lose loved ones. We know about all those kind of troubles. There are other kinds of troubles that we may not be aware of. Spiritual troubles. We may not be taking seriously enough how we have sinned against God and that we stand under God's judgment because we rebel against Him. We break His commandments and we need His grace and His mercy. So we have all kinds of perils that we face. And these bad things that we go through are intended to make us cry out to God for help and to seek help in Jesus the Redeemer. The gospel is an announcement of good news that we have a Redeemer. His name is Jesus, and He saves us. Ruth laid down at Boaz's feet and pleaded for his covering. And so we must bow down before Jesus and plead for his covering mercy and give ourselves fully to him. Nothing is more important than that. Make sure of that. I love the story of Ruth. I finished reading these four chapters and 
I thought, what a beautiful and powerful and hopeful story of God's steadfast love. Naomi went out bitter, but she came in blessed. And so the story ends. Boaz took Ruth. She became his wife and went into her, and the Lord gave her conception, and she bore a son. Then the women said to Naomi, Blessed be the Lord who has not left you this day without a Redeemer. May his name be renowned in Israel. He shall be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher of your old age. For your daughter and all who loves you, who is more to you than seven sons, has given birth to him. Then Naomi took the child and laid him on her lap and became his nurse. And the women in the neighborhood gave him a name, saying, A son has been born to Naomi. They named him Obed. He was the father of Jesse, the father of David. I always get chills when I read that sentence. Because this is not just a story of what life was like in Old Testament times or, or a story of how, how families can help each other. It is that. But this is a story of the, God, uh, the providence of God being worked out in a dramatic way. Naomi was at the end of her rope. Her husband was dead. Her sons were dead. Her daughters-in-law needed to go back to their own homes. And she would go back to the land of her origin to find what she knows not what. But God blesses Naomi through Ruth, through Boaz. And we see the providence of God bringing not only survival here, but the birth of a child. They named him Obed. He was the father of Jesse, the father of David, the father of Jesus, the father of our Redeemer. Humanly speaking, what would have happened to us if Naomi had passed into obscurity and faded away in Moab? But God saw, and God heard, and God loved, and God sent a Redeemer. Let us pray.